In this video, I wanted to showcase some of the math templates that Pear Deck has created to help you get started and inspire you to create better questions because that's one of the things that I think Pear Deck does and does really well is help you think about how to frame different questions and provides you the tools to be able to do that and have great discussions as a class. So the first template idea is which of these doesn't belong and so obviously you would replace these four images with images of your own and this is a draggable type slide meaning from the student end they can drag their dot to the image that doesn't belong. Now on the teacher end, you can show responses and that would actually overlay all of the dots. And an idea for that would be to see if most of the class agrees or not on which of these doesn't belong. This could be a type of question where there isn't just one right answer. And then you could even have students pair up and defend their answer to a partner. So that's just one of the slide types to perhaps inspire a new idea. The second one, insert your prompt here and it's a number line and these numbers can actually just be changed. So it's really just a graphic for you to start from. You can change the numbers, you can even change the scale. For example, if you wanted to duplicate and put one in the middle, you could even create little half lines to do something with fractions or decimals. This type of slide can be great for helping students develop a spatial awareness. The drawing type slide, you could do negative two plus three, for example, and have them just kind of use the number line to figure out where they are. There are a lot of different possibilities. The great thing about this is when you're ready to discuss as a class, you can look at everybody's thought process and really discuss those on the board. So you can go ahead and just look at one student at a time and go through those, have students explain the reasoning so that you can really bring awareness to the different ways to solve problems. This next question type, again, I see as a way to not just discuss a final answer, but more importantly, the process by which students have arrived there. So this asks solve and you would enter your problem here. So, you know, you can just easily change any of this text. Show your work below and put the answer in the yellow box. This again is a drawing type question. Students can make their pen pretty thin so that they might be able to draw some work. If students have an iPad or a touch screen, that is ideal. They can also do it on their phone. Right now, quite honestly, I am just drawing with my mouse. And so all students could put their process of solving and that would be a way to just discuss all the different answers that the class gets. If there are some wrong answers, everything is displayed anonymously through the projector view. And so this is a great way to discuss the correct answers and the incorrect answers. And for the incorrect answers, what were any common misconceptions that students had? Discuss it, talk about it, and learn from those mistakes. For any correct answers, talk about how the approaches differed, if one approach was more efficient, why students might take different approaches, and again, for those incorrect answers, really identify the source of the error and analyze potential sources of those common misconceptions so that everybody in the class can grow. This next one is just really handy for shapes, geometry, from elementary to high school. We can use all these different shapes. This is a drawing type question, so you could just delete all of the other shapes except, say, the circle, if that's what you want to focus on. And then this is editable, so you can put in a radius, say you want students to know something about circumference, and then students can draw on this slide to mark it up and so forth. The next one is a graphing template. So you would enter your problem here and you can again change any of this text. So you can change the scale as you need. And this would be another drawing response type question. So students would be able to draw, maybe they would plot some points and they could use the line tool. And then from the teacher end, what's really powerful is that you can use this overlaid layout. Right now, I don't have multiple students logged in, but that would actually plop all the graphs one on top of one another. And so that would be a really easy, quick way to see if everyone in the class is arriving at 
the same answer or if they are not. So that overlaid layout is wonderful for graphing type questions. The other types of layouts are grid layout, so you can see each different student's response. And list layout is just one at a time. You would kind of scroll through. But for the graphing problems to see if there's consensus, it's really powerful to just use this overlaid layout. The next question is just a why question, a reminder to ask students to explain how they got that answer. And this one would be a text type response. The power of putting these types of questions in is it helps students really verbalize their math reasoning. And that's a very important skill for students. So having this in the math templates is a great reminder to all of us math teachers. Remember to ask students why and to verbalize that process. Now, if you didn't know, Desmos embeds beautifully within Pear Deck. So it looks like this on the student end. All you have to do is go down here and make it a website type slide. And then you can just put in the Desmos graph. If you have one started, you could put that in. Or if you just want them to be able to use the blank Desmos calculator, desmos.com slash calculator. And they can start playing with some sliders perhaps you want them to play with and see the effect of B and C on this graph. And then you can follow up on the next slide. So on this slide, you could ask a very specific thing for them to explore. And then you could follow up on the next slide with a text type slide, asking them to verbalize what they had discovered. The next one, solve the problem and type the numerical answer. So what's cool in Pear Deck is that there is a number type slide. So let's say that our answer is five. And so when you go to show responses, you see how the number type slide comes up. So you can really see if there's consensus around an answer with a number slide versus with a text slide, just each number would come up separately. So this is a great tool here. It's great whether you're doing something with statistics or really just looking if there's consensus on a problem as a class. So that's the Pear Deck number type slide. Then there's multiple choice too. So you could, you know, insert a story problem or something where you have multiple choice answers. And that would be really easy to see if students are agreeing. So it would look kind of like this. And though I love having students explain why they get what they get, it's also important to get a pulse and a sense of class needs and if we need to spend more time on a certain thing or not. And so multiple choice is always great for that type of thing. Finally, there are always these beginning and end of lesson slide types. And one of my favorites is in one minute, write the most important thing from today's lesson or pretend your friend was absent from class today. I love that one too. Circle how you're feeling to get a sense of how students are feeling at the end of class before you close, just to know what students you might want to go check in on first. Those are always great to end the lesson with also. But I'm excited to show you some of these math template ideas to hopefully spark and inspire some different type of questions that you might ask in your classroom. Hope you enjoyed.